I'm showing you here a picture of a physical coordinate frame, just like the coordinate frames that we've drawn previously on our kinematic diagrams. In this picture, the blue axis is the x-axis, the red axis is the y-axis, and the green axis is z. Now the first thing I want you to notice about this coordinate frame is that there are three ways we could rotate it. One way would be to leave the x-axis, the blue one, sitting on the table just like it is and rotate the rest of the frame around the x-axis. If we do that, there's a standard form that we would follow to write the rotation matrix representing a rotation around the x-axis. That rotation matrix looks like this. A rotation around the x-axis would be written as 1, 0, 0 for the first column, 0 cosine of theta, where theta is the angle that we've rotated around the x-axis, then sine of theta, 0 negative sine of theta, cosine theta. Remember that we learned in the last video that a rotation matrix is 3 by 3. So you see that this rotation matrix around the x-axis is 3 by 3. Rotating around the x-axis is not the only way that we could rotate this frame. Another way we could rotate this frame would be to leave the y-axis on the table and rotate the rest of the frame around the y-axis. Now I'm going to draw the direction of this rotation like this so that it will be a positive rotation. Now if we rotated around the y-axis instead of the x-axis, our rotation matrix will look different, but it will still have a standard form. The standard form of the matrix looks like this, cosine theta, zero, negative sine theta, zero, one, zero, sine theta, zero, cosine theta. Lastly, we could leave the z-axis sticking straight up in the air like it is, and we could rotate the x and y axes around this axis like that. If we rotate around the z-axis, we have yet a different rotation matrix. The z-matrix looks like this cosine theta, sine theta, zero, negative sine theta, cosine theta, zero, 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 one. These are the only three ways that we could rotate this frame. I'm now going to show you a couple of examples about how we rotate a frame and what the rotation matrix looks like. Here I'm showing you two frames, a zero frame and a one frame, and both of these frames are in the same orientation. Remember that when we draw a kinematic diagram, we have one frame on each joint and we also have one frame on the end effector. When we write the homogeneous transformation matrices for our manipulator, we need to write a rotation matrix that tells how one frame rotates to match the next frame. We have to do this for each pair of frames. So now I'm going to show you some examples of two frames that do not match 
and how we could write the rotation matrix that shows how we get one frame to match the next one. Take a look at these two frames I'm showing here. Here, the frame on the left, the zero frame, does not match the frame on the right, the one frame. How could we rotate the frame on the left to match the frame on the right? Here, the x0 axis is in the same direction as the x1 axis. In other words, the two blue axes are in the same direction. That's a clue to us that we could get the zero frame to match the one frame by rotating around the x axis like this. Here, I've shown a rotation around the x axis of 90 degrees. The way that we would represent this as a rotation matrix would be to go get our standard x rotation matrix and plug in an angle of 90 degrees like this. Now let's take a look at another example. I'm showing here two frames, a zero frame and a one frame that are again not in the same orientation. How could we rotate the frame on the left in order to match the frame on the right? First, we look to see if there are any axes that are in the same direction. We can see here that the Z axis, the green axis, is in the same direction for both of these frames. That's a clue to us that we could get the left frame to match the right frame by rotating around the Z axis, like this. Now the two frames match. We can write the rotation matrix that represents what we just did by going and getting our standard rotation matrix around the Z axis and plugging in 90 degrees, which is the number of degrees we rotated the zero frame in order to get it to match the one frame. Now, here's another example. How could we get the frame on the left to match the frame on the right? Once again, we're going to start by looking for an axis that is in the same direction between the two frames. Here, the Y axis is in the same direction. So we'll rotate around Y like this. In order to write the rotation matrix to represent what we just did, we'll go and get the standard rotation matrix around Y. However, this time we have to be careful about the angle that we plug in. We didn't rotate 90 degrees around Y. Instead, we rotated negative 90 degrees around Y. So we'll plug in negative 90 in this rotation matrix. How do we know whether we're rotating in a positive or negative direction? We find this out by using the right hand rule. We put our thumb in the direction of the axis we're rotating around and the direction of curl of our fingers tells us the positive direction. Now let's look at another example. How could we rotate this frame on the left to match the frame on the right? This time our trick of finding one axis that matches between the two frames won't work. None of the axes are in the same direction in this case. That tells us that we're going to need to use more than one rotation in a row in order to get the left frame to match the right frame. 
For our first rotation, we'll pick one of the axes and rotate to get one of the axes to match. I'm going to start by trying to get the two Z axes, the green axes, to match. In order to get the Z axis on the left to match the Z axis on the right, I'm going to rotate around X like this. Now I do have a matching axis. The Z axis matches. So all I have to do is rotate around Z to get the two frames to match. Here we used two rotations. We first rotated 90 degrees around X. Then we rotated 90 degrees around Z. The way that we represent this in a rotation matrix is by multiplying the matrices together. I'll write a rotation around X first and then I'll write a matrix for a rotation around Z next. When I multiply these matrices together, this tells me the rotation matrix that represents first a rotation around X, then a rotation around Z. Now note that the way I did this is not the only combination of rotations that would get the left frame to match the right frame. Let's take a look at a different way you could have solved this problem. We could have first decided to get the Y axis to match with a rotation around Z. Then we can rotate around Y like this to get the two to match. What would this rotation matrix look like? We would first write a 90 degree rotation around Z like this. Then we would write a negative 90 rotation around Y like this. Once again, we multiply these two matrices together to get our complete rotation matrix. If you look back at the matrix we calculated using our first set of rotations and you compare it to the matrix that we calculated here, you will notice that the two matrices are identical. In other words, it doesn't matter which series of rotations you use to get one frame to match the next. Any valid series of rotations that gets one frame to match the next will end up giving you the exact same rotation matrix.